I'll go ahead and start with today's session. Today I'm going to be talking about the uh, cutaneous manifestations of uh, COVID-19 disease. So uh, it's important that uh, we know what are the skin manifestations of COVID. I'm sure all of you must have studied all the other systemic involvement which happens in COVID. And uh, the skin lesions can also serve as an important marker uh, to differentiate the severity of COVID-19 disease. So uh, let's go ahead and begin. So we'll be reading about, so we'll be reading about the uh, cutaneous manifestations of COVID under these three headings. The uh, cutaneous features of COVID-19 itself, the side effects, the skin cutaneous side effects which are associated with the COVID-19 vaccines and the personal protective equipment associated with the cutaneous side effects. So these are the three headings in which we'll be studying the skin manifestations of COVID. Okay, so uh, I'll not go very deep into the pathogenesis. So everybody knows that uh, COVID, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it mainly uh, attacks the AC inhibitor, AC uh, receptors of the cell. So what we need to know that even the skin, particularly keratinocytes, uh, the sweat gland cells, fibroblasts and melanocytes also have AC2 positive uh, cells. So this is how the COVID uh, virus affects the skin. So uh, many studies have uh, shown that the incidence of cutaneous lesions range from 20 to 80%. Uh, in the Indian studies, it's around 0. 0.5 to 20%. Okay, so uh, very briefly to tell you about the pathogenesis, I'm just going to be drawing the pathogenesis. So we all know that there is binding of the go to, to the acetyl cholinesterase receptors, which I just specified um, in the keratinocytes. So that what that does is it really, the uh, pathogenesis is similar to the pathogenesis which happens in any other organ, that is cytokine storm. Okay, so the main cytokine which uh, is at play here is interleukin-1, interleukin-6, interleukin-8, interleukin-10, 12, and TNF-alpha. And uh, this leads to apoptosis of the host cell. So this is the basic pathogenesis of COVID when it comes to any organ, and it's uh, similar even in the skin. So this, so this was actually a very recent study which was performed in Italy where over 1,000 patients of COVID with cutaneous manifestations were recruited and they came out with this morphological classification. So there are mainly seven types of cutaneous manifestations which can happen in COVID. Uh, the most common one is the morbilliform or the maculopapular rash. The second one is the vesicular rash. The third one is urticaria. The fourth one is pseudo chilblain or perneo. So I'll be talking about all this in detail. The fifth one is necrotic lesions. So under necrotic lesions, you have acral ischemia or hemorrhagic macules. The sixth one is libido reticularis. And the seventh one is some miscellaneous things like pityriasis, rosea, erythema, multiforme, uh, enanthem, or a flexural rash. So what we need to concentrate is the first four or the first five ones. So uh, again, they have classified the manifestations of COVID according to the severity, that is, um, depending on what skin manifestations appear, they could judge the severity of the lung manifestation or the severity of COVID itself. So they found out that the vesicular rash appears at an asymptomatic stage, that is, before the systemic symptoms of COVID sets in, there is a vesicular rash. They found that during the symptomatic stage, that is once the lung involvement or the URTI, LRTI features have already set in, uh, the manifestations, cutaneous manifestations, which appear are pseudo chilblain. So if, if a person comes with pseudo chilblain, I'll be telling you about what pseudo chilblain is. But just for now, just remember that pseudo chilblain is a mild manifestation of COVID. That is if a person has chilblain like lesions, then we can say that the systemic manifestations are not going to be that severe. Whereas if a person has these necrotic lesions, 
or urticaria or libido reticularis then it can be a predictive factor that the person will have a more severe form of systemic covid so here what we need to remember is that just that during the asymptomatic stage the vesicular rash appears uh, pseudo chill pain is a mild symptom of is a symptom of mild covid uh, whereas necrotic urticaria and libido reticularis is a feature of severe covid and they also did a histopathological analysis of all these cutaneous skin lesions and they mainly found that the histopathology can be two things so it can either be lymphocytic vasculitis or it can be due to hypercoagulability so this is the uh, two pathogenesis either vasculitis or hypercoagulability just no need to remember what comes under what just remember the uh, two main histological features of the cutaneous lesions of covid okay so this is a very simple diagram depicting some of the uh, cutaneous skin manifestations of covid so here you can see something called as androgenetic alopecia so i'll be talking about that so in this study they also found that um, men who suffered uh, from covid had a more severe form developed uh, androgenetic alopecia later on or even uh, people who had androgenetic alopecia were found to be more prone to covid that's what they proved from the study uh, all these are all the other uh, features which you can see urticaria morbiliform rash vesicular rash petechial rash so this diagram is a very brief introduction i'll be talking about each one of these things in detail so let's go to the first and the most common one there is a maculocapillar or the morbiliform rash this is the most prevalent or the most common cutaneous manifestation of covid which was seen throughout the pandemic uh, among all the studies performed in almost all the countries they found that maculocapillar rash was the most common cutaneous manifestation of covid so the prevalence was very wide but on an average it was found in around 40 to 50% of the patients so they also found that Uh, the middle aged or the elderly group were more commonly affected and it was rarely found in the pediatric age group um so it was the onset like i said was simultaneous with covid-19 systemic symptoms so the onset of the cutaneous lesion is important like i said the only uh, cutaneous skin lesion which was found in the asymptomatic stage of covid was the vesicular stage all the rest of the other manifestations were either found simultaneously or after the systemic symptoms of covid-19 developed so the pathophysiology is it is secondary to the infection or it is either a post covid immunological reaction um the associated symptom was uh, pruritus and it was associated with a greater severity of covid-19 so the treatment was a uh, symptomatic treatment due to treated the patient with antihistamine emollient and top, sometimes topical corticosteroids associated with very little mortality but the thing to be remembered here is that maculopapular rash was associated with a greater severity of covid-19 infection so what what i mean here is um uh, maculo in patients who had a maculopapular rash and covid they had a severe form of systemic covid that's what i mean to say when i say that this particular cutaneous lesion is associated with a mild severity of covid or a greater severity of covid i mean the severity of the systemic disease okay so the thing to the, to be remembered with a maculopapular rash is that it is the most common cutaneous lesion of covid and it is associated with the greater severity of covid and uh, when does it appear it appears simultaneously when the systemic uh, symptoms of covid appear okay, so this is again an image uh, showing a patient with a maculopapular or a morbiliform rash on the thigh okay, so the next symptom was found to be urticaria so the prevalence of urticaria was is this urticaria was found to be the second most common symptom the prevalence was found, found to be 7 to 40% middle aged patients again it was onset was simultaneous before or after um the average duration it lasted for around 6 to 8 days and again this was associated with moderate to severe covid-19 okay so this was a child with um generalized urticaria you can 
see the lesions of urticaria here so these are all lesions of urticaria okay and the child was asymptomatic at the stage but uh, was later diagnosed with um, covid-19 again this was an elderly female this these are all pictures this is not uh, my personal pictures these are pictures taken from the study like i said the cohort uh, study which was done in italy of 1000 patients uh, so this was an elderly female patient who had a uh, bilateral edema of the lids so this is known as angioedema and she also had these urticarial lesions so she was diagnosed as a case of urticarial vasculitis and was later found to be rt pcr positive okay so the thing to be remembered with urticaria is that it is the second most common manifestation of covid it corresponds to either a moderate or a severe degree of covid so in each cutaneous manifestation this is what you need to remember uh, what degree of severity does it correlate to when does it usually appear in the course of the disease so these are the two things which you should remember in every cutaneous manifestation this is what they going to ask you uh, when does it appear does it appear before the illness before the systemic symptom after the systemic symptom um, how se how severe is it let's moving on to the vesicular lesions um so vesicular lesions are the specific cutaneous manifestations of covid-19 again the uh, most common site of involvement was found to be the trunk onset uh, like i said if you remember i said that vesicular lesions are the only things which only lesions which appear in the asymptomatic stage of covid but that uh, what is that was in a minority of patient in the majority of patient they appeared at the same time as other systemic symptoms So the pathogenesis here is again uh, immune overreactivity or cytopathic effect of the virus on the endothelial cells of the dermal vessels. So I, it was either monomorphic or polymorphic. It uh, in some patients it was lo just localized few vesicles here and there, and other patients it was uh, diffuse. Uh, itching was found to be associated in majority of them. and this corresponds to intermediate severity of covid-19 so on histopathology the findings which were um, there were intra epidermal vesicle which contained multinucleated and balloon keratinocytes and mild acanthosis so this was a patient who had a vesicular rash okay so the thing to be remembered with a vesicular rash is that uh, it is the specific it is a specific manifestation of covid and it appears either before or same time as other systemic symptoms and it corresponds to an intermediate degree of covid that is a moderate degree of systemic illness okay so um before i talk about this chilblain like lesion so so uh, many of you must be wondering what this chilblain is so chilblain is also known as some, it's also the other name for it in dermatology is also known as pernio so what chilblain exactly is is excuse me just a second a chilblain is uh, it's an abnormal inflammatory response to cold it's a abnormal response to cold there is prolonged vasoconstriction due to uh, extreme cold so chilblain is a um, temperature uh, associated uh, injury there is prolonged vasoconstriction where the the areas which are usually affected are the distal toes distal toes or the fingers or heel sometimes the nose and the ear so when these areas are affect are uh, subjected to extreme cold there is prolonged um, and sustained vasoconstriction and this leads to the formation of uh, erythematous or a uh, bluish uh, looking macules and papules so this lesion is known as chilblain uh, 
uh, and we usually treat uh, chilblain with a vasodilator such as nifedipine. So chilblain like lesions. So in COVID, it's called chilblain like lesion, or it is called a pseudo chilblain because it's not exactly happening because of exposure to cold, is it? So it's because of COVID. So it's called a pseudo chilblain in COVID. So the other name for it given, the other name was COVID toes. Because like I said, the most common site affected was the distal toes. So it was also known as COVID toes. Uh, so it's unrelated to cold exposure. So that is why it is known as pseudo chilblains in COVID. So the prevalence is found to be 15 to almost 72%. And uh, the site, like I said, distal uh, toes and fingers. So the onset was after the onset of COVID-19 system. So this is a very important thing here. So this was a late manifestation of COVID. This was a late manifestation of COVID. Uh, it almost appeared one to three weeks after the systemic symptoms appeared. So here, uh, let me show you some images. So here, here you can see that there is erythematous. Here this is erythematous. This is a little bluish looking. Uh, this is, you can see, this is a plaque. Okay, this is a papule. This is a plaque. It mainly occurs over the distal toes and fingers. Here you can see the involvement of the heel. Okay, so this is a chilblain, pseudo chilblain. So it appears as an erythematous to violaceous plaque, mainly found over the acral lesion. And uh, the associated symptoms are pain and pruritus, like a burning sensation. Okay, so the thing to be remembered, the important thing to be remembered with um, chilblain is, uh, it is called a pseudo chilblain in cold because it's not related to cold and it is a late manifestation of cold. Coming to the next one, petechiae or purpura, it is a petechiae are, uh, was a rarely described cutaneous manifestation. So uh, it occurred acrily or on the, it occurred either diffusely or only on the extremities. So this was associated with a severe COVID. So the thing to be remembered here is that petechiae was associated with severe COVID. So this uh, was a patient who had a particular rash on his extremities. Yeah. So petechiae again, libido reticularis is also a rare, it is the least common cutaneous manifestation of uh, COVID. So it was mainly seen in the elderly on the uh, trunk flexor surface of the forearms, dorsal hand and dorsal foot. Again, this was associated with a more severe COVID infection. So let's just go back to that slide, which I told you initially, where the severity of, uh, discussed about the severity of COVID in the table. Now, so like I said, um, chilblain, pseudo chilblain was associated with a mild to moderate disease. Whereas the one which we just studied now, libido reticularis, and uh, even PTK comes under the necrotic, category. So this, both of them are associated with the, and urticaria associated with severe COVID. So PTK was associated with severe COVID. Uh, libido reticularis was also associated with severe COVID. Uh, so uh, if you don't know what exactly libido reticularis is, it is like a, a reticulate or a net like rash, uh, which is mainly found on the uh, proximal aspect of the thighs. So this, this is libido reticularis. And now talking about some of the very uh, rare manifestations. So these are all not established manifestations of COVID-19. So these are just uh, a few case reports here and there which were found. The main manifestations which were found extensively. Like I said, the most common one was a maculopapular rash. The second most common was urticaria. Other than this, vesicular rash, petechial rash, uh, and libido reticularis. So these are the things, uh, important things, or the commoner things which were found. Whatever I'll be discussing from now on are just few case reports here and there. 
EM like lesions are uh, erythema multiformly like lesions, that is, targetoid lesions, which are found on the here in this patient. You can see on, uh, on the uh, upper extremity. So, uh, two to three weeks, they were found two to three weeks after the onset of systemic symptoms. How do they differ from classical erythema multiforme? The EM like lesions of COVID were smaller, less widespread, and atypical. So, here you can see that the so a typical I'll just talk about that before this slide. Uh, also, a few patients had uh, mucosal lesions or an enanthem. Like I told you, I've told you about enanthem in one of the previous classes. A rash on the mucosa is called as an enanthem, whereas a rash on the skin surface is called as an exanthem. So, mucosal lesions were found in few patients with uh, purpuric lesions or erythema multiforme like rash. So, here you can see a this is an enanthem which was found on the hard pellet of a patient. This patient also had a purpuric crash. So these are the other uh, oral manifestations of other oral lesions which are found in COVID. Transient U-shaped lingual papillitis, aphthous ulcers, uh, tongue swelling, glossitis, mucositis and burning mouth. Again, few case reports or one or two case reports here and there. They are not established manifestations of COVID. Uh, these are all, again, very rare, very rare things. Pityriasis, rosea-like rash, pseudoherpetic variant of grower disease. All these terms may sound very big. I'll just very briefly tell you what this is. Grower's disease is also known as transient cantholytic dermatosis. Maybe we'll discuss about this in um, one of the further classes. Yeah, one, one um, like a peculiar thing which I want to talk about is CIDRIF. So uh, let me show you an image of CIDRIF. Uh, okay, so CIDRIF is, I'll just write it down over here. CIDRIF is symmetrical drug related intertrigenous and flexural exanthem. Okay, it's a very big term to remember. Just remember that there is something called a CIDRIF and it is a drug rash. It is a symmetrical drug-related intertrigenous and flexural exanthem. So here mainly there is an exanthematous or an erythematous rash in the intertrigenous areas as you can see in this patient in the groin. So this is also known as the other name for CIDRIF is baboon syndrome. So I'm sure all of you can guess why it is called as baboon syndrome because of the uh, diffuse erythematous rash which is found in the gluteal region. So that is known as baboon syndrome. Cetrif is symmetrical, drug-related, intertrigenous and flexural exanthem. This, there, there was one or two case reports of uh, cedrif happening uh, post-COVID. So uh, this is one of the things which you can remember. Uh, erythema nodosum like lesions were also found and I'll be talking about the manifestation in children separately so this is a very important thing Miss C multi-system inflammatory syndrome was an important manifestation of COVID-19 in children yeah, so uh, these were all uh, the skin lesions which were found. So dermatology is not complete without talking about the nail and the hair involvement. So we'll talk about these uh, two aspects as well, the nail involvement and the hair involvement. So there was there is something known as COVID nails, which is also red. Uh, the sign It is a named sign known as red half moon sign. So here you can see, our, I'll just show you some images. Our, this is the lunula. This is the lunula. 
So above the lunula, you can see this red violet band. You see this red violet band about the about the lunula. This is known as the red half moon sign. There is a, a formation of a red violet convex band about the uh, lunula. So the onset was found to be two weeks after COVID. So it is due to the localized microvascular injury. Again, these are all case reports. Coming to the hair, like I said, uh, there one particular study found an association of uh, uh, association between androgenetic alopecia and COVID-19 disease. So there's this particular sign, Gabrin sign, uh, severe AGA occurring post-COVID is known as Gabrin sign. So the mechanism is very complicated. I just remember that it has something to do with the uh, the androgen receptor. Uh, it primes the COVID uh, uh, virus, and uh, as it primes the COVID virus, it increases the transmissibility of the virus through the ACE2 receptor. So just remember that there is some interaction between the androgen receptor and the ACE receptor. So which is why a uh, um, more severe form of AGA is found to occur in patients post-COVID. The other hair manifestations uh, which occur in COVID are acute telogen effluvium. So telogen effluvium is um, hair fall which occurs due to any sort of stress, which occurs due to any uh, fever or any acute stress which the body goes through. So this, this is the most common hair, hair uh, uh, manifestation of COVID. Uh, severe AGA again is very rare. The most common hair manifestation or the uh, hair associated side effect of COVID-19 is acute telogen effluvium. There have also been some case reports of alopecia areata. Okay, so uh, again, some very miscellaneous conditions. Uh, vasculitis, like I said, leukocytoplastic vasculitis, urticarial vasculitis, a drug-induced vasculitis, yeah, and now this I uh, why have why I have put this at the end is because that uh, it is not known, it's not proved whether there has been any association with COVID nineteen. But I have seen a lot of cases of um, herpes zoster which are which have occurred post COVID. So the theory here is that the dormant virus gets reactivated uh, because of the uh, lowered immunity post COVID. So, uh, and the morphology here can, uh, it's not the normal morphology of herpes zoster which uh, appears. There is a more severe form of herpes zoster. Uh, necrotic variant and hemorrhagic variant are seen. So the most common distribution seen was found to be the trigeminal uh, distribution, that is herpes zoster of thalmicus. Again, there is no uh, well-established association between herpes zoster and COVID-19. Yeah, so this uh, coming to the this particular manifestation which happened only in children, the multi-system inflammatory syndrome. This is again a very big topic. Just remember that it it, it is a multi-system involvement. Basically, all the systems, cardiac, RS, GI, uh, neuro, renal, everything is involved. And the cutaneous features are very, very similar to Kawasaki disease. You could see red and cracked lips. Uh, there was a maculopapular rash. So there was bulbar conjunctivitis, lymphadenopathy. So this is very similar to the Ghent criteria of Kawasaki disease. It was found to be uh, very similar to Kawasaki disease, the cutaneous and the systemic manifestations of NISI. So uh, among the pediatric patients, NISI was the one which was found more prevalent and erythema multiforme. Everything else was pretty much similar. Uh, the most common manifestation here was also found to be the maculopapular rash. Everything else was similar. Just remember that the um, particular or the specific cutaneous uh, feature uh, or the COVID manifestation in children was MISSI, multi-system inflammatory syndrome. So this was all about the actual disease associated uh, cutaneous manifestations. So uh, I'll just very briefly sum it up. So the five 
So the uh, most common one. Most common one was the macular papilla rash. The second most common was the urticarial uh, rash and uh, uh, petechial rash, libido reticularis, vesicular rash. Uh, the uh, other three things not very common. Okay, so and the other very rare ones like I told you, vasculitis, erythema multiforme, pityriasis, rosea, uh, sedrif, erythema nodosums. These are all the very rare things. Uh, coming to the nail, so there was the red. A half moon sign, gabrin sign, and acute telogen effluvium in the hair. And the uh, see in children. Okay. So, these very briefly, these were the cutaneous manifestations of COVID 19 disease itself. So, now let's just uh, very briefly uh, go through the vaccine associated cutaneous side effects. So the most common one, I'm, I'm sure everybody faced this, was the local. Reaction, swelling, hair demand, pain in the vaccinated arm. Uh, onset was one day after vaccination and it subsided after three to four days of uh, vaccination. So the, in some patients, there was a more severe hypersensitivity reaction, which happened four days after vaccination. Let me just show you the pictures of this. Some patient also had this rash, uh, which appeared three to four days after the vaccination. There was erythematous uh, targetoid uh, papules to plaques, and the diameter was pretty big, 5 to 20 centimeter. And again, that resolved within uh, 10 to 15 days spontaneously. In very severe cases, they had to treat it with systemic glucocorticoids. This was again a um, like a severe form of uh, allergic reaction to the vaccine. All these manifestations again uh, are case reports, there are no big trials conducted to prove whether all these are the cutaneous um, side effects of the vaccine, but one or two case reports here and there have been reported, like thin planus, uh, psoriasis, pityriasis, rosea, particular rash, varicella, zoster. So whatever we studied uh, as a part of the disease itself, all of them can happen even after vaccination, because that makes sense. So very rare, very rare, bullous pemphigoid, uh, subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus, exacerbation of psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, dress, dress is drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. So anaphylaxis, again, very, very, very rare. So uh, I'm sure all of you must have read in the papers, heard everywhere that somebody just dropped dead after the vaccine happens happened very rarely four out of a million doses of the pfizer and 2.5 out of a million doses of the moderna had anaphylaxis there were no anaphylaxis which was reported with uh, covid shield and covaxin so these were all again uh, case reports of the side effects associated with the vaccine. So this was known as COVID arm. So we read about COVID toes, right? COVID toes was chill blains. COVID arm is the hypersensitivity reaction which occurs after the vaccine. So this is COVID arm. Okay, COVID arm and COVID toes. Uh, there was urticaria reported after the vaccine, morbidly firm rash, pityriasis rosea like rash, purpuric rash, papillary vesicular. So, like I said, all the manifestations which happened with COVID also happened with the reaction with the vaccine. And now coming to the very last part, the uh, personal protective equipment associated cutaneous features. So these were all mainly pressure symptoms, mainly because of the pressure. I'm sure all of you have seen these images. Um, so there were three main type of skin lesions. Like I said, device-related pressure injuries, moisture-associated skin damage, and skin tears. Pressure and moisture were the two main causative factors of PPE-associated cutaneous lesions. So here, uh, some studies devised this table, which... Uh, came out with the risk factors which are associated with increased PPE-related injuries. Uh, 
wearing PP for greater than four hours every day, hyperhidrosis, age more than 35 years. So there was a particular uh, skin reaction to every uh, aspect of the PP. The goggles had a particular reaction, the N95 mask, the latex, the latex gloves, the head cap. So all of them had different manifestations. Uh, so this was a recent article I published, which uh, uh, where we proved that there is an entity which is known as mask acne. So uh, mask acne and mask rosacea. So uh, we showed that there is an increased uh, incidence of acne uh, post wearing any type of mask, surgical mask, N95 mask, cloth mask. And we also talk about the precautionary measures to be taken to prevent these. So you can check out my paper uh, on this journal. It's the Journal of Cutaneous and Aesthetic Dermatology. You can just uh, type out mask acne in skin of color. Yeah, so this, uh, just to show you this, this is because this image here is because of the uh, metallic uh, band which lies inside the N95 mask. This uh, is a pressure injury because of the metallic hinge of the N95 mask. This is a uh, goggle related injury. This is the head band, the head cap related injury. And here obviously skin tears. So uh, before we uh, conclude this session, I, I just have some images to show very quickly, just run through like a small quiz or something, uh, what type of rash this is. This, like I said, this is the most common rash, which I talked about. This is the macular papillar rash. So this is COVID toes. Again, multiple pictures of COVID toes. The other name of COVID toes is pseudo chilblain. It is not known as chilblain because it is not a cold related injury. Again, like I said, heels can be affected. All these are COVID dose or pseudo chilblain. So this is a vesicular rash. Again, a vesicular rash. Again, a vesicular rash. But here you can see that there is an atypical sort of vesicular rash where you can see that some of them have developed hemorrhage, hemorrhagic thrusting. So this was uh, this was the only case report of a baby who was diagnosed with uh, who was RT PCR positive and had urticarial uh, vasculitis. So this is targetoid lesion of erythema multiforme. And the last one. This is a petechial rash. Okay, so uh, just to very quickly summarize the, uh, like I said, the cutaneous manifestations of COVID can be studied under three topics. The disease uh, itself, the vaccine, and the PPA-associated uh, cutaneous side effects. So uh, why is it important for us to know about these things? Because the cutaneous manifestations can predict the severity of the disease. And we should be aware of the cutaneous side effects of the vaccine. And we should also be aware of how we can prevent the uh, PPE-associated cutaneous side effects. Um, so thank you.